Welcome back to the channel. For you guys that's um, stuck with me so far and the ones that's new, uh, I appreciate you being here. I just walked in from work and I want to take a minute and give you a, a quick video. This is going to be part one of a at least a two part video. Pardon me, we on the porch and we got vehicles going down the road. Um, what I wanted to show you today was this Diet Pepsi can. Actually, you know better. So, I got a dilemma. One of my, well, I don't know if we're friends, but quick story. My doctor, her husband, is a gun enthusiast just like I am. He texted me the other day on Facebook, and he says, are you still looking for a lever action Marlin rifle? And I said, of course, yeah, you know. I'm always, hang on a minute, let me straighten this up. I'm always looking for lever actions if I can get a, or any other firearm if I can get a decent deal on. So he says, well, I got a buddy that has got one. He has no need for it, he didn't hunt. And he really isn't a gun person. And I thought, oh, Lord, mercy. What could it be, you know? Let me... So he gave me his number, and I called him. Long story short, he went to telling me that his father-in-law was in the military and had retired and has since passed on. He retired from the military in, in 1987. Okay, so his company, platoon, bunch of friends, whatever, got together, and they got him a rifle and I don't know we dedicated it to him presented it to him whatever and uh his father-in-law wasn't a gun guy just like he's not a gun guy so his father-in-law stuck it in the safe in 1987 he had no idea about he didn't hunt he didn't carry hand the only firearms he had any dealings with was in the military and when he got out, he didn't want no more to do with it. And that's fine. That's whatever, whoever, whatever, you know, that's your prerogative. I ain't gonna knock you for it. In fact, in this instance, I want to thank you for it. So they had the paper where everybody had signed it, the serial number of the rifle, where they presented it to him um, and such. Of course, they didn't have the price on it. You wouldn't do that, you know, if you're going to give somebody something. You, don't, you ain't going to, just like Christmas, you tear the price tags off. So that wasn't listed, but that kind of authenticated the story to me that the rifle was the one mentioned on this paper and that it was presented to him as a retirement gift. And the cool part of it is the guy really wanted a watch. He wanted he, he wanted he wanted them to get together and get him a gold watch. But you know, instead he got this so cheap rifle. Or so he thought. If he'd lived today, he would have had a different outcome. So that's why this is a part, this is going to be a two-part series about this rifle. And I'm sure there'll be some, some comparisons to, you know, to come in the future. So if any of y'all that's watched me over time, you've seen my video on my Marlin Lever Action 3030. But what you've never seen from me and what I never would have dreamed that I would ever come across that rifle. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you something you may never see again. You certainly won't for me, I'm sure. Look familiar. This is a Marlin 336 CS um, lever action 3030. So you say, well, what's special about that? Well, to start with, let me put a lot of this to rest. It depends on where you read and who you ask. The, the designation of CS, you know, Marlin has designations for all their 336s and some of the other, you know, rifles. CS does not stand for cross bolt safety from what I gather from Marlin. The C stands for carbine because this rifle has a 20 inch barrel. And the S, that letter alone stands for safety. And if I 
think I might be wrong, so don't don't jump up and down and, and cuss me out. But I think Marlin used one letter of the alphabet to designate one uh, feature. So, like the you know the A W would be the Marlin thirty A, and the W would I think it would designate Walmart or Walgreen Walmart I believe. So anyway. But that's not the, the trick. What what is what is nice about this rifle and why it's so I don't know what to say, why it's got me so giddy, can't you tell? Is this rifle has never this is an eighty seven model. It's never been fired. Never has it been fired. And better than that, this rifle's never even been loaded. The, the the feed the feed ramp has no swirls where it's been polished. There's no scratches. The gun was full of that yellow, I think they, what do they call it, cosmoline packing grease that used to come in these older rifles. Now, you know, it's not a 1950 model Marlin Texan Deluxe or anything, but it is a semi-deluxe or whatever they, they're, they're, you know, they had different, um, different grade rifles too. This rifle doesn't have the checkering and the gold trigger and the high gloss or it would be the super deluxe. But it does have the white line spacings. It does have the end, the, you know, the grip cap. Um, and I think back then most of them come with the little hammer spur. This one's still loose where I didn't put it on. He, you know, it was on when he bought it, when they bought it, I assume. The rifle's never been fired. It's never been loaded. And my dilemma is, do I use it for a hunting rifle? it make a great hunting rifle, and I would love to use it for that, and that's why I bought it. You know, I never would have thought that the gun was actual new 1987 model Marlin 336CW. Um, it is not absolutely pristine, and here's why. The rear sight, the little V notch that sticks into this here is made is missing. That's it. And there's a very, very, very slight hint of surface rust in two spots. And if you're a lever action fan, you know where those spots are. It's right there where it's been toted in and out of the safe, and right here where it's been picked up in and out of the safe. That's it. I'm up in the air about whether or not to take a, a you know what. A oily paper towel and rub that off because you can do this and it just about comes off so for those that don't know we'll do a quick overview of the rifle like I've said it has a 20 inch barrel buckhorn sights uh, it does have the crossboat safety you know you have to decock it I mean a uh, half cock it it's got the crossboat safety uh, walnut wood got the butt cap, you know, the end cap with marlin on it. The uh, grip plate, what do you call this? Grip plate. Um, JM stamped, made in North Haven, Connecticut. It is a micro groove barrel. At this time, marlin had went over to micro groove barrels, okay, instead of the Ballard style rifle. Whether you like it or you don't like it, that's up to you. I, I, Really hadn't seen an ounce of difference in either one. Um, still got the hood over the sight. Again, whether you like it or don't like it, that's completely up to you. Personally, I don't like them. Still got the screws where it was drilled and tapped. Um, there's a big misconception about the receivers on the 336, and if you guys argue with me, go look it up. And if I'm wrong, tell me. The top of the receiver is solid. It didn't they don't it didn't say what the rest of the receivers are. It just says it has a solid top receiver uh, top end on the receiver. And that's for mounting scopes and the taps where it doesn't strip. You know uh, by the serial number it's a nineteen eighty seven. The gun like I said I, I'm just amazed. I don't know if y'all can see in there. It's still got some of the old 
packing grease and such. It's done, it's done, uh, I won't say caramelized, but it ain't caramel. It's done kind of tried to harden up. So do I, do I fire it and use it? Or do I leave it unfired? And let me tell you this real quick. I didn't take the woman's paperwork. This was her dad's rifle. And she's selling the rifle already. Her husband is selling the rifle. Um, it was left to him. But she kind of, she didn't care for the rifle, but she wanted the paperwork. I, I was allowed to read it. I probably could have gotten it or a copy of it. But I didn't want to do that to her. I wanted to leave her with that. Um, you know, it's the least I could do. So, you know, they were nice enough to, to part with the rifle. I'm not going, I didn't see no reason for me to strip the paperwork from her because I'm going to use the rifle. I want to use the rifle for hunting rifle. But would you use it? Would you load this rifle? and drag it in and out of the woods, sticking it down in your four-wheeler holders and it's gonna scratch and knock the blue and off. But then again, it would be a superb hunting rifle. Scope it, um, you know, uh, use it. What would you do? I could go buy a, another hunting rifle. I have other hunting rifles. In fact, I, you've seen the Model 94 Winchester video. I have another lever action hunting rifle. Um, Henry's and all that. But we're talking about this rifle. Would you use it? Or would you stick it in the safe? That's where we're at. So, I don't know the weight of the trigger. I've never cared to know the weight of, of any lever action triggers. It is what it is. It's not a, uh, and nor does it ever claim to be a precision rifle. Uh, some of them shoot better than others. You know, if I can get inch and a half, two inches at 100 yards with this rifle, I'll be tickled. Um, with this particular rifle, if I get five gallon bucket at 100 yards, I'll be tickled because of the story behind it. But for all, you know, actual accuracy needs, um, you know, versus usable distance with this rifle, um, you know, a couple of inches is fine at 100 yards. You know, this is it's not just a 100 yard gun like you've been reading about and hear about on, you know, from people that don't know on YouTube. Um, I personally have killed deer over 150 yards with, with a 30 30. Wasn't in the Marlin, but it was a 30 30. Uh, much past that, you know, you may, you may retain your accuracy, but then you start to lose energy so fast that, and the rule of thumb is don't go under a thousand foot pounds you're right at that at about 150 yards with 30-30 Winchester cartridge. And, you know, uh, something else. Would you scope it or would you replace that sight with a original sight and, uh, and leave it like that? Y'all tell me what you think. Uh, if y'all decide that I need to shoot this rifle, which I'm hard leaning that way, but if I decide that, that's gonna be the part two video. You're gonna be the first ones to ever see. I think that you'll be the first one to see a 1987 new 87 model rifle loaded and shot the first time. Um, I know it will be for me. You know who would have thought in my in my gun dealings and and looking and you know things like that that I would run across an unfired 1987 336. So. Anyway, if we've helped you or if we've got your attention on anything or if you just like looking at my pretty face, some of y'all do, and you know it. I do. But, just, but anyway, if we've helped you, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to videos. Uh, you know, deer season ends here tomorrow. But, you know, we shoot year-round. I do. I just enjoy it. I've sat out there and I can burn up $100 worth of rifle ammo shooting at beer cans sometimes. When you can find it, 30-30 you can find it, you know, here and there. Not a big deal. Uh, you got to pay for it now. It's no longer $15 a box, but, you know, neither, neither is anything else. Bought eggs lately. 
But that's my question, my dilemma, a couple of us. Would you scope it? Number, well, I guess number one should be, would you load it? Would you fire it? Number two would be, would you use it as a scope rifle to hunt with? Tell me what you think. So, God bless you. Like and subscribe, share the videos. Leave comments on anything you'd like to know about that I can help you with. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know, but we'll we'll research it together. We'll find out. Uh, so, take care of yourself and each other. Stay healthy. Thank you.